Welcome to an introduction to podcasts. In this short presentation, I'll outline what podcasts actually are, how they might be useful in education, how to subscribe and listen to podcasts, and how to get started recording your own simple podcast. But first, let's just consider what podcasting is. Podcasts share some of the benefits of radio programmes with the convenience of portable digital music players and began to gain popularity as MP3 player sales took off with the launch of Apple's iPod around a decade ago. The name originates from the pod in iPod, combined with the cast as in broadcast. Despite the pod in the name, you don't need an Apple manufactured device. And podcasts can be video as well as audio. These are sometimes known as vodcasts. So I'll focus on audio podcasts in this presentation, as this will keep things simple, and most of the principles apply equally well to video anyway. So, what exactly is a podcast? Here's John Anderson. Hi, my name's Dr John Anderson, and I'm a lecturer in the School of City and Regional Planning in Cardiff University, and this is a short podcast about podcasts. A podcast is a multimedia digital file made available on the internet for downloading to a portable media player or other form of computer. Podcasts have become increasingly uh, popular within academia as one pedagogical tool that can enhance teaching and learning. And this podcast seeks to outline some of the key debates that have arisen through the um, increased popularity of podcasts within academia, as well as showcase some of the ways in which I've been using podcasts within my human geography lectures within the School of City and Regional Planning. So podcasting is a medium through which a wide variety of messages can be communicated. As Vologel and Gard distinguish, in academia, podcasts are generally used for administrative purposes, for special lecture series, or for any form of curriculum teaching in the form of classroom podcasts. So why podcast? There are lots of podcasts out there for you to recommend to your students and for your students to find. And you can make your own podcasts. But think about the question, how could podcasts enhance your students' learning? John Anderson again. It's assumed that podcasts re realise a number of benefits for in the student teaching and learning process. They're portable, flexible and convenient, meaning that listen students can listen to them at any time. Uh, students can listen to them when they're doing other things, being on a bus, uh, waiting on a train, for example. They can multitask and therefore get their learning in a variety of ways. As long as they've got easy internet access, they can access these podcasts and they can listen to them repeatedly going over material to make sure they understand it properly. Similarly, they can control the speed of playback. If they're not very good at English as a first language, for example, that might help them. There's an automatic subscription. They can watch it back through iTunes or other sort of uh, uploading software. Students can listen to it whenever they want to. And there's special advantages for students who are auditory learners rather than perhaps uh, more uh, written based learning, a blended form of learning this, this helps therefore. And similarly this helps uh, students who are principally learn online or through distance learning, uh, podcasts allow them to access their material in a variety of ways. I'm going to pick up on one of John's points in particular. He mentions automatic RSS subscription, but how many of us actually know what RSS means? While there's some debate over what the letters actually stand for, the important thing is that, in essence, it is about subscription. A podcast is something you can subscribe to, so that when a new episode is published, it is delivered to you to listen to straight away. You don't need to go and keep checking to see whether a new edition has been made available. It's a bit like getting your favourite newspaper and magazine delivered. You don't have to go to the news agent to check if they're out yet, and you don't have to hunt through all the different titles. If you want to know more about RSS, watch this video by Sarah Horrigan of Sheffield University. The video focuses more on subscribing to written articles using RSS than podcast, but the principles are very much the same. When you're browsing the web, you need to look out for the links that let you subscribe to podcasts, and you'll need some kind of software to subscribe with. For podcasts, usually called podcatcher software or pod receiver software. This screenshot is an example from the BBC website, which provides quick links for subscribing using all different kinds of podcatcher software. One of the most popular pieces of software for subscribing to podcasts is iTunes. You may already use this to listen to your digital music collection, but it can manage your podcast subscriptions too. 
Juice is another podcatcher. Both of these are free to download, and many others are available too, including apps that you can get for your smartphone or tablet computer. Finding podcasts presents some unique challenges. Radio and television, at least until recently with the advent of iPlayer, Listen Again and DVD box sets and so forth, were very different. There were a few channels, and you could watch or listen to something if you were around when it was on, and that was it. But the number of podcasts on the web keeps growing. You can listen to all the back episodes, even as new ones keep appearing. Being able to find the particular podcast you are interested in is therefore crucial. And indeed, if you are making podcasts yourself, ensuring your audience can find those podcasts is vital too. This is done by using metadata such as descriptions for the series and each episode, and especially using categories and keywords to help identify them. And it is useful to know that there are directories that list available podcasts. As well as institution-specific directories, there are general public directories. One of these is built into the iTunes Store. The iTunes Store is for buying digital music and movie downloads. But there is a large selection of podcasts in there, all of which are available for free. Launch iTunes and click on iTunes Store in the source list. Then go up and click on Podcasts at the top of the iTunes Store page. You can now search or browse through the podcasts that are available in the store and select any one that you may be interested in. This will bring up the page for that podcast and you can download individual episodes of the podcast or you can subscribe to the whole podcast to automatically download new episodes when they become available. Podcasts will now appear in the podcast section in the source list. The little number will tell you how many new podcasts you haven't listened to. Here you'll see the latest episode has already been downloaded for you. When creating your own podcast, even before you start recording, planning is a vital stage. You should think about things such as the format you will use. Will it be audio or video? How often will your episodes be published? Roughly how long will they be? And what kind of metadata will you need to attach? So think about descriptions and keywords. Then it comes to recording. In a moment I'm going to demonstrate recording using the simple Campus Pack tool that is available in Learning Central. All you need for this is a microphone and there may be one built into your computer, particularly if you're using a laptop. There are a few checks you should make sure before you begin. If you're using an external microphone, make sure it's plugged in and switched on. You may also need to check that it is selected as the audio input, and it may be necessary to adjust the levels. You should make sure that it's not set so loud that your voice is distorting, but it's not so quiet that you can't be heard. Then you'll be ready to begin recording your podcast. In the Learning Central module where you're going to publish your podcast, go to the content area in which you want the podcast feed to appear. Go to Interactive Tools and select Campus Pack Podcast Feed from the drop-down menu. A new page will appear where you can choose from existing podcasts if you've already got some set up. That will just link to what's already there, but we're going to create a new one. New is already selected, so just click Submit. A new page will come up allowing you to fill in information and metadata for your new podcast feed. Give the overall podcast a title and provide some sort of description which explains what your podcast series will be about. You don't need to change any of the other settings at this point, so when you've done that, click on Add. Your podcast now needs to have its first episode recording, so click on Add New Episode and give it a title. Then click Continue. And now you can start recording your podcast. Select Record Media and hit Record. There are other options available for recording. You can upload media or you can link to something that's already on the internet. But recording inside your browser is simplest. You can do it there and then sitting at your computer. And when you finish, just click Stop and then go down to the description and type some show notes for the episode. Then click Save and Exit. Students can now play the episode in Learning Central within their browser. If they have iTunes on their computer, they can subscribe to it with one click using the iTunes subscription link. If you make the permissions for your podcast public, you can share the subscription links anywhere you like. 
and you can submit your podcast to directories, such as the iTunes podcast directory. That's it for this very brief introduction to podcasting. If it's wet your appetite, then hopefully you'll have a go at browsing and perhaps subscribing to some podcasts, and maybe even having a go at creating a podcast of your own. If you want to contact me with any queries, feel free to do so. You can either contact me at the email address shown, or you can mention me on Twitter. You may also be interested in finding out more about John Anderson's work on digital literacies at his Spatial Manifesto website.